In this video, we're going to learn how to count the number of characters which are common to two strings using C. So let's first declare two car arrays and store two strings inside of them. So we'll declare a car array called str1 and we'll store into this car array the string portfolio. Then we'll declare a car array called str2 and we'll store into this car array the string courses. So these two strings both have the characters lowercase o and lowercase r. So we would say these two strings have two characters in common between them. To solve this problem, we'll include the string.h library because this library includes a function called strlen, which is going to return the length of a string. Now we'll create a function to count the number of characters which are in common between the two strings. This function is going to return an int type value, the number of characters in common between the two strings. We'll call the function itself count common and the function is going to be passed both strings and their lengths. So we'll have the parameter car star str1 for the first string and int len1 for its length and car star str2 for the second string and int len2 for its length. Then down here, we can call count common and we can pass it str1 and the length of str1, which is nine, because this string has nine characters total, not including the null terminator character at the end of the string and we'll pass it str2 and the length of str2, which is seven. Now, if we didn't know the length of these strings, what we could do is call strlen to figure that out. So here, for example, we could call strlen and pass it str1, and this function is going to return the length of the string str1. Then we could do the same thing with str2. So here, we could call the string length function strlen and pass it str2, and in this case here, the function is going to return seven. Now we could store the returned count of the number of common characters into an int type variable. So here we'll declare an int type variable called common count, and we'll store the return value of calling this function into that variable. Then we could output common count here. So we'll call printf and pass it a string with common character count colon, and then percent %d to output an int value followed by backslash n for new line, and we'll output common count. Now I should note that when we pass the car arrays str1 and str2 to the function, what's really being passed is what's called a pointer, where a pointer is a memory address. What's going to be passed is the memory address of the first character in each of these strings here. That's why we have car pointer parameter variables here, where these variables are going to store the memory address of the first character in these strings. Now practically, this won't really matter for us, because we can use array notation to access these strings. But I wanted to point that out in case the usage of car pointer parameters would be confusing. So next, let's define this function. We'll copy this and then supply a definition of the function down here. And the first thing we'll do is check to make sure that str1 and str2 are not pointers to nothing. So the special value null is essentially a pointer to nothing. So if str1 is equal to null, or str2 is equal to null, that would tell us that at least one of our string parameters is a pointer to nothing. In that case, we're just going to return negative one as an error, as we can't really find the number of characters in common between two strings if we don't actually have two strings. Now to count the characters in common between the two strings, we're going to assume that our strings are made up of ASCII encoded characters, where in ASCII, the integers from zero to 255 are used to represent each character. So for example, the character uppercase A is represented with the integer 65, and the character eight is represented with the integer 56, and so on. Then what we could do is declare an int array with a length of 256 to represent each character that could be in either string. So we'll declare the int type array called exists in strings of length 256 it will initialize all the elements in this array to zero. Now what we'll do is use each index in this array to represent the presence of each character in the strings. So for example, if we have exists in strings at the index uppercase A, uppercase A is really the integer 65. So if we find the character uppercase A in str1, then we could set this index equal to one to acknowledge this. Then if we also find the character uppercase A in str2, we can set this index equal to two to acknowledge this. So we can use this array to help keep track of how many characters we've found in common to both strings. 
let's create a for loop to go over each character in str1. We'll have here a for loop with a counter variable i, which we'll initialize to zero. We'll increment i by one with each loop iteration, and we'll stop this loop once i is no longer less than len1, the length of that first string, str1. So we're going to use the counter variable i to go over each character in the string, where str1 at the index i is going to give us each character in the string with each iteration of the loop. And what we'll do is set the index in this array for this character equal to one each time. So for example, if this character here is uppercase A, that's really the integer 65. And what we'll do is set the index in this array equal to one to acknowledge that we have found this character in the string. So here we'll have exists in strings at the index str1 at the index i is equal to one to acknowledge that we have found this character in the string. Then what we'll do is go through str2 in the same way. So next we'll have a for loop with a counter variable i, which we'll initialize to zero. We'll continue this loop so long as i is less than len2, the length of the second string, str2, and we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration. So again, we can access each character in str2 with each iteration of the loop using str2 at the index i. Now what we want to do is check to see if this character was already found in the first string. And we know that if the index in this array for that character is equal to one. So we'll check for that here. We'll have here if exists in strings at the index str2 at the index i is equal to one. What that means is we already found this character in the first string str1. And in that case, we'll now set the index for that character in this array equal to two. So here we'll have exists in strings at the index str2 at the index i is now going to be equal to two. To acknowledge that we have now found the character in the string str2 at the index i in both strings. And again, this character could be something like uppercase a, where really uppercase a is the integer 65. And so really we're setting this index of this array to two to acknowledge that we have found this character in both strings. And that index is only going to be set to one if we found this character in the first string str1. Now, one thing I should acknowledge is that this condition is only going to be true the first time a character that's common to both strings is found in str2, but not on subsequent loop iterations when that same character is found in str2. So for example, if we find the character uppercase A in str1, that means this array is going to have that index equal to one because we'll have found uppercase A in str1. Then the first time we find uppercase A in str2, we'll acknowledge this here, and we'll set existing strings at the index uppercase A equal to two. Then any subsequent time that we find uppercase A, this condition is going to be false. And that's okay, because we've already acknowledged that that character is common to both strings. So next, we could count the number of characters that are common to both strings, we'll declare an int type variable called count, which we'll initialize to zero. And each time we find a character that's common to both strings, we'll increment count by one with count plus plus. Then down here, we can just return count. So we're going to return count and that's it. So now if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here a common character count of two, which is correct because these strings here have the characters lowercase o, and lowercase r in common. We could try capital ABC, and now we have no characters in common. If we save compile and run the program, we get zero, which is correct. So this is how we can count the number of characters that two strings have in common using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.